Climate change impacts marginalized people the most and first. Hi, my name is Jamie Margolin and I am a queer youth climate justice activist here in Seattle, Washington. I co-founded an international youth climate action organization in 2017 called Zero Hour and I'm a part of a lawsuit suing my state of Washington for denying my generation our rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness by continuing to make the climate crisis worse. Um, here in Washington state. So the way the climate crisis works is that is a, it is set up by systems of injustice. So anytime that you are more vulnerable to anything, uh, whether it be because of your sexuality, your gender, um, your race, etc., you're going to automatically feel the worst effects of the climate crisis because the system is going to be stacked against you. So if you think about uh, all of the the dangers of the climate crisis, the polar vortex with deadly low temperatures or deadly high temperatures with massive heat waves. And you think about the epidemic of homeless LGBTQ youth, then the, the, the kids out on the streets are disproportionately queer because of the, the state of homophobia, because of families thinking that it's okay to disown kids because they're queer. And those kids who are out there and vulnerable to the elements are gonna feel the effects way worse than someone who has a place to go home and hide from the cold and hide from the heat. So LGBTQ youth, um, especially trans youth, um, as well as LGBTQ adults who, because of the way also our economic system is set up where there are not very many anti-discrimination laws that prevent people from firing queer people for being gay or all of these other reasons why people will choose not to hire gay people, not to hire trans people, it puts us at a unique risk because the people who are best at surviving the climate crisis are people who have money, resources, and a place to hide. And you can't have that if you don't have a job because you've been fired for being gay, because you've been fired for being trans. You can't have that if you're homeless on the street because you're a kid who got kicked out because your mom found out that you're a lesbian or whatever your situation is. What I've learned from studying the queer liberation movement is that it started out with the most marginalized retaliating against violence. If you look at the climate movement, it's pretty much the same. But if you see and um, who is getting the most press, who's getting the most resources, the resources go to the top, go to the powerful white climate activists who came after the indigenous climate activists. And yes, I am queer and I am Latina and I am Jewish and I'm a woman, but I do want to use this opportunity that I have right now to talk to say that the climate movement, similarly to the LGBT movement, the person who throws the first brick, like at Stonewall, is a person of color, usually I can guarantee you in pretty much anything. And with the climate movement, it was indigenous folks for literally thousands of years. Lately, there has been a little bit more focus as the white young climate activists have been getting so much press. A lot of people have been like, I bet there's black kids doing this. I bet there's brown kids doing this. And there are, and they were the ones doing this first. And what happens is when only white voices are highlighted, then the people who are actually on the front lines who are 100% mostly people of color, indigenous folks, the resources don't go to them because people don't even know about them. And so the funding that they need to actually do the work, to, to stand on the front lines, the messaging, like the media, the, the awareness isn't there because it because it's 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 all been taken. And so then what what happens is you're left with kids and black and brown folks on the front lines with minimal shoestring funding, hardly able to do this work and support their families as well. When there's so much money out there, there's so much media and cameras out there that could also be pointed. This is no shade to um, the other white climate activists out there. This is no shade to myself either. Like you can have the camera on me and you could also have it on my friend Tokata Iron Eyes in Standing Rock. You don't have to choose. You don't have to choose between Greta or the Standing Rock kids. You can put the cameras on both and it's going to benefit everyone in return.